Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today I'm kind of excited to tell you about some new additions we got. Not necessarily for the shop in this case, but just some new acquisitions myself. And then as I picked up recently a couple of these old, I'm going to call them hit and miss engines. Technically these are throttled govern governor engines, uh, but uh, what people generally refer to as a hit and miss engine. These are gasoline engines that would have been used back in the day, uh, usually where you don't have electricity or something along those lines, you need to have a power source. So back pre-electrification on the farm, these little gasoline engines like this would have been used to power any kind of machinery that would have been used on a farm or a home or what have you. These would have been used to run hammer mills and grain mills, uh, anything that basically needed to run on a farm uh, before they had electricity. And in many cases, a lot of our rural areas didn't have a uh, electricity until into the 1920s, 30s, even 40s. Uh, so these things were absolutely critical to have out in a rural area. Uh, this particular one here is a Fairbanks Morse Model Z. This is a three horsepower engine. The one on the right is also a Fairbanks Morse. So this is a Model Z as well, but this one is a little bit different. This one was made for the oil field industry uh, in the areas where they had oil wells. And basically this would have been used to pump oil They'd have had the old pump that goes up and down out in the oil field. And uh, this one ran off of natural gas instead of gasoline. So basically what they would do is they would just uh, cap off your oil well, put a line coming off of it, a regulator in there, and you had natural gas right there. It was basically just going to waste. So they took that natural gas and they would run these engines and basically the oil well was powering the energy needed to pump the wells. So the story on these is that uh, both of these I've just recently picked up. This one here, I uh, worked out a deal with one of my viewers, uh, Gary Aswald up in uh, Illinois. Uh, back in the spring of this year, actually, I think it was actually back during winter time, we first started talking about this. He told me he had this engine. He used to work in the oil fields and uh, used to actually work on keeping these engines up and running. He had this one that he had restored at some point in time. He was getting up in age and not really able to get out and use it and enjoy it very much and just felt like he needed to pass it along. And we did some horse trading. He was looking for something in particular uh, and I was able to get that item for him up there and we just did a swap. We got him something he needed and I got something that I will maybe not needed but wanted uh, which was this engine and uh, we're going to show you this thing running here in just a minute. The one over here this one uh, I acquired from Tom Crenshaw over in Alabama and it was kind of uh, ironic I was getting ready to go pick up this one because it had been it was up in uh, Illinois I had to get it down to Georgia uh, my friend Fred Newman was picking up a load he carried this engine from there to from Illinois to Texas. Uh, Andrew Alexander, Blacksmith Tools, he saw it, it show, came through his shop, he picked up some stuff there. Then it went down to Florida uh, and in Florida it sat for a while until I could run down there to get it. Uh, I had worked out a time to go down there and get it and about that time Tom said, hey, I've got a little three horsepower Fairbanks Morse gas powered engine that he was going to restore. Similar situation, health issues have come in and he really just wasn't able to get around to doing this. And he wanted to see this, this engine restored, uh, which I told him that I would do at some point in the future. We're gonna take this engine and restore it and get it up and going. Uh, and uh, Tom was gracious enough, he actually gave this engine to me uh, in exchange for me actually restoring it and getting it going. I am no, no expert on hit and miss engines. I've played around with them some over the years. I know a little bit about them, just enough to be dangerous. Uh, but this one will be a restoration project down the road. Fortunately, I think it's in pretty good shape. And we'll show you a little bit about that in a minute as well. Let's start out. I'm going to see if we can get this one here cranked up and I'll let you kind of see it. So before we crank this one up just a little bit, this one is a little bit more modern engine. I, I don't know the full history on them, but I, I do know that they were making this engine, or at least, I don't, I don't know if it was Fairbanks Morse, but uh, basically the same engine all the way up into the 1980s. Uh, I don't even know the date on this one. I think that uh, he had told me at one time, but I don't remember. I need to look up the serial number and figure it out. But um, this one is a little bit more modern of an engine than the other one. Same basic principle, of course. This one runs on natural gas or propane is what we're going to run it on. But it actually has a radiator built into it, whereas the other one just has, it's a, it's a water-cooled engine that has just a water jacket around the cylinder. Uh, but this one's actually 
basically cir actually circulating the water going up through a radiator up in the top. Uh, runs off of a magneto, so no battery or anything like that. This magneto has a charge in it, and that's what sends the spark down to the spark plug. So uh, we're going to see if we can fire up. I'm going to open up my gas here, and uh, we'll open up the regulator until I just start to hear some gas going through the line. We'll come over and see if we can get it cranked up. we go she is a running sounding pretty good uh, really didn't have to do anything to this one other than just hook it up to some fuel and fire it up and sounds like it's there it goes but it basically runs and is in good shape really cool to have this thing around So you can kind of hear this thing, it'll, it'll run for a little while, get up to speed. We don't have a load on it right now, so it's just kind of freewheeling, but uh, it'll actually uh, quit firing. The RPMs will drop down and then it'll kick back in and kind of get back up to speed. Uh, I've been told that these engines run better when they're under a load, uh, a little bit more constant RPM on them, but you can kind of see the concept here that it's only firing uh, when, when it needs to. And so on these oil wells, a lot of times when that was going on the downstroke, it really wouldn't fire as it going down in there, but then as it's pumping up, it would kick in and, and fire coming back up. And uh, that's why they call them hit and miss engines. Again, this is technically a throttled governor instead of a true hit and miss action, uh, but similar, uh, similar type thing of what it's doing. It's only running, it's only firing when it actually needs to, uh, to save in some fuel. I know the lighting's not real good out here, but I thought I'd show this real quick. This one actually has the clutch mechanism on the side to engage the, the belt pulley. So right now it's kind of spinning, but if you look on here, I'm gonna try to slow it down. You can see it's not fully engaged, but all you gotta do is just grab a hold of this handle right here, pull it out, it engages that clutch, and now that's turning, and then you can just push that in and it'll stop the, 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 the pulley from turning. So you actually got a clutch to turn your belt pulley on and off. Kind of a neat feature on here. This is a Fairbanks Morse again, uh, model 118, uh, which I think is the uh, amount of uh, displacement in the cylinder, 118 cubic inches maybe. I'm told that up in the oil fields that these engines would run for months and months at a time, just sit there and constantly run without ever being shut off. Sometimes probably years uh, before they were shut off and just being fed with the natural gas coming right out of the well. All you had to do is uh, just make sure it's kept oil in it more or less and uh, water in your cylinder. And these things would just run and run and run and run. They were very simple but uh, very dependable. I'm gonna shut the fuel off on it. I'll let the fuel run out and let it just uh, come back down to an idle or to a stop rather. So I will note there's a key on the shaft here and this handle fits up on there. It goes up on that key. Uh, but the neat thing about it is, is it only turns in one direction. Uh, it grabs on there, it's spring loaded. Notice it'll just go round and round and round in this direction. So the nice thing about this is, is when you're spinning it up by hand, once it uh, gets the energy going in there, it just kind of 
freely goes so you can easily just pull that off without this uh, thing running around and slapping you in the head and uh, hurting yourself or anything else. So just a little safety feature and there's a little spring-loaded dog uh, that catches on, on that, on that uh, key in there. Kind of a neat little, little device. So this little three horsepower uh, Model Z engine, I don't really know a whole lot about it as far as um, what it's going to take to get this thing going. I think it's in pretty good shape, all things considered. Uh, I mean, noticeably, we got the magneto on here. I do not have a, a uh, lead going from the magneto to the spark plug, so we're not going to get spark. And the magneto, I mean, it's all there. It looks a little bit rough. I may take this magneto and send it off to someone, let them just check it out, make sure it's working properly get it hooked up and everything. But the good news is, is that this thing has got really good compression on it. In fact, I can hardly even turn it over. You can kind of push this valve in the front and that'll release the pressure on there. But I can hear the compression in there. This thing's got really good compression. So that is a good sign. Um, really, if you got compression, you got fuel and you got fire, it ought to run. So uh, I don't think it's going to take a whole lot uh, to get this going. My game plan on this, I think, is, is we're going to probably tear it down, clean it up, do a restoration on it. Um, I, you know, one thing I don't know about is there's a fuel tank down in the bottom. It's missing the caps. I haven't looked to see what shape that fuel tank is in. Uh, it, I don't know if it's going to hold gas or not. And there's a, some type of pump that pulls the the fuel up out of that tank and up into the carburetor. I'm not sure if any of that's working right now. Um, we're gonna have to check all that out. But good news is, is that it turns over. It's got oil and grease and everything like that on it. It's got compression. So I take all that as a good sign that so this one is a, gonna be something that hopefully is not too terribly difficult to do a restoration on. Don't know when I'll get to it, but I hope to do that sooner than later. This little three horsepower one's just got a flat belt pulley mounted up onto it. It is, of course doesn't have a clutch mechanism on or anything like that. It's just running whenever the engine's running. Uh, neat little engine though. I really am looking forward to getting it running. Uh, what am I going to do with these things? Well, other than look at them and fire them up and listen to them run, which is a good enough reason to have one. Uh, I've got kind of got a couple of ideas. So uh, one suggestion that has come up is that, hey, can I run my metal planer off of this thing? And uh, we very well may hook this thing up to the metal planer and see if we can use this as a power source to run the metal planer with. Now, I don't know that I wanna have that set up as a permanent solution. I don't wanna necessarily have to go run this engine every time I use the, the metal planer. Uh, I would pro eventually wanna get a motor put on there where I can run it off of the motor, but just for fun, it would be fun to hook this thing up and run that planer off of this engine, at least for a little while. And, uh, you know, I've also toyed with putting a line shaft up in the shop and maybe uh, having this as an option to run the line shaft off of. Maybe one day, we'll see. Uh, I think it'd be a really cool thing. This one here's probably got enough power to it that it could easily run a line shaft and maybe a couple of machines in the shop. Uh, I would love to put a steam engine and boiler out here because I am kind of more of a steam guy than I am a gas engine guy, but uh, I don't know that I will ever get to the point. I, you know, getting a boiler and engine and all that out here at my house, uh, a lot, a lot of money tied up in that. I'd love to go down that path one day, but we'll see. I don't know. This is, might, might be my, my more realistic solution. Uh, another thing I've been wanting to do is, is I've got those two ice cream makers that I picked up several years ago and uh, really haven't done a whole lot with them. I took one of them apart and started restoring it. I've got a problem with some gears in there, some bevel gears that are gonna, they're kind of complicated on how to come about fixing them. And I've been working on some stuff that I'm maybe have some more on that later on. It's not something that I can machine here in the shop, unfortunately, because of the way that at least one of those gears is made. But uh, eventually I would like to get those ice cream churns hooked up on a little trailer and maybe have a little hit and miss engine. Maybe this little gas powered one here or this one, either one, and be able to take that and run those ice cream churns, you know, go to the church social or wherever and be able to, to, to churn ice cream with one. Uh, I've seen those setups at a lot of different fairs and shows and I just always thought that was neat. And uh, I would love to maybe do something like that one day as well. And so maybe one of these engines will end up on a trailer and uh, become my, my mobile ice cream factory. Can't go wrong with ice cream, right? 
but uh, that's kind of my that's kind of my thoughts. And uh, I, like I said, I have just always been mesmerized by these engines. I've always wanted one my whole life, and uh, now all of a sudden I've got two. So I'm a very fortunate person. Thank you to both uh, Tom and uh, Gary for uh, reaching out to me and helping me fulfill my dream of getting a hit and miss engine. Hopefully, you guys at some point down the road, and hopefully not too terribly far into the future, get to see a series of videos on restoration of this. I will say that. Again, I'm not an expert on these engines. I would like to find someone, preferably kind of in the area down here that really knows these things that can maybe give me a little bit of help uh, doing a restoration on one of these, on this engine, uh, just because I wanna make sure I'm doing it right. And uh, I, I know the basics, but anyway, I, it, I, I would rather learn from someone that knows more about them than I do. So maybe we can work something like that. Maybe, a, maybe some collaboration videos to restore this thing, who knows? Uh, find someone willing to work with me on that but uh, that's where we are. Thought you guys would enjoy seeing these. I uh, wanted to share them. I've actually had them in the shop now for a while and haven't done a video on them. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and get this video knocked out uh, because I know that both of these guys are wanting to see their engines and uh, see my excitement about having them and uh, share this information with you guys. Uh, but with that, that is gonna be it, it for this uh, Monday episode of vintage machinery so uh, thanks for watching guys as always uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already we do all kinds of restoration work around here uh, if you like gas engines you'd probably like a lot of the other stuff that i do out here as well and uh, we'd love to have you come on as a subscriber if you're already a subscriber make sure you hit that bell icon up there uh, so that you get notification of when new videos come out because otherwise youtube may or may not let you know uh, so that's when you hit that bell icon, you're saying, hey, I want to know when Keith Rucker puts out a new video and they will make sure you get to see that. And uh, thumbs up or appreciate it as are those comments. And with that, guys, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.